Greetings, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Uh, this is going to be part two of the fasting for the fast on July 31st, 2020. We opened up with, uh, well, we ended part one with uh, Joel uh chapter 2 and i think we got to verse 11 so i'm going to read verse 11 again and we're going to keep going now you may not know it but uh when it talks about in verse 10 it says uh the earth shall quake before them the heaven shall tremble the sun and the moon shall be dark and the stars shall withdraw their shining well, that's Revelation end times event language. Matthew 24, that kind of stuff. Verse 11, And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army. Yeah, the Lord has an army. For his camp is very great, for he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can abide it? And the answer is that only those that are in Christ. Now, one of the big things that, um, one of the big problems in demon nominational churches is they'll tell you that the day of Christ and the day of the Lord is two different events. Yes, essentially is uh, denying that Jesus Christ is Lord. You know, they'll say, well, you know, the day of Christ, that's, the pre-trib rapture, and then the day of the Lord is the, you know, when he finally returns in glory. Sorry, but there's not a one and a half coming. There's only a first coming and a second coming. There's not a one and a half coming or a two and a half, three coming, you know. No, it, it doesn't work like that. So, verse 12. Now, Therefore also now, saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning. And we're not talking about morning and afternoon. We're talking about being sorrowful. Verse 13. And rend your heart. Tear your heart, and not your garments. And turn unto the Lord your God. For he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. Uh, sometimes the Lord, under certain conditions, will repent and turn around from bringing horrible judgment. Verse 14. Who knoweth if he will return and repent and leave a blessing a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the elders. Gather the children and those that suck the breasts. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Let the priests and the ministers of the Lord weep, weep between the porch and the altar, and let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to reproach, that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, Where is their God? And who's the heathen? Take a look around you in the big cities, people. New York, L.A., Chicago. You want to see the heathen? Look around you, people. That the heathen... O Lord, and give not thine heritage to reproach, that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, Where is their God? Then will the Lord be jealous for his land, and pity his people. 
Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied therewith, and I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. But I will remove a uh, remove far off from you the northern army and will drive him into a land barren and desolate with his face toward the east sea and his hinder part toward the utmost sea and his stink shall come up and his ill savor shall come up because he hath done great things. Fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring for the tree beareth her fruit, the fig tree and the vine do yield her strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the fats shall overflow with wine and oil, and I will restore to you the ears that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. Did you know that the locusts and the worms and the caterpillars is called my great army which I sent among you? Huh. 26. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass afterward, listen carefully, prophecy here, that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Now, if uh, Matthew 24, we're just going to take a look at this uh, care, uh, just briefly. Matthew 24, verse 27, For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall the also the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Uh, for those of you that don't know it, there is a um, there's an eagle vulture, believe it or not. Verse 29. Immediately after, immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. See, Joel chapter 2 is some end times uh, prophecy events. Now, if you want to read, you could read Acts chapter 2, uh, around verse 20, where they're actually quoting Joel. It says, The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come. You know, that's the thing. They always, uh, these demon nominational preachers will always tell you, oh, uh, well, don't read the Old Testament. Uh, you know, that's for the you-know-whos. And we're not the, we're not them. So don't read it, but, you know, you can't understand the book of Revelation if you've never read the Old Testament. It just would, doesn't make sense because book of Revelation, all the symbolism comes from the Old Testament. And there's a lot of prophecy in the Old Testament. A lot. I mean, let's face it. Act, 
uh, Matthew 24, Acts chapter 2, book of Revelation, comes from Joel chapter 2. Where do they get off saying, uh, you know, oh, well, you know, don't read that. Because if you read the Old Testament, you'll have questions that um, I don't want to have to answer. That's what it is. That's what it's all about. Now, in Revelation chapter 9, we read, uh, I'm just going to read verse 9-2, Revelation 9-2. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. Um, I'm going to guess it's probably like a volcano. I don't know. Uh, Revelation 16.10, And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain. Revelation 8.12, And the fourth angel sounded and the third part of the sun was smitten and the third part of the moon and the third part of the stars so that the third part of them was darkened and the day shone not for a third part of it and the night likewise so yeah all right let's go to book of zechariah all right let's read zechariah uh, there's Zechariah and Zephaniah. We're reading Zechariah, Z-E-C-H-A-R-I-A-H. Uh, I get Zechariah and Zephaniah mixed up. But um, this, is, he was a prophet after the Babylonian captivity. So I guess he was a contemporary with uh, Ezra and Nehemiah after Judah had spent... Judah and Jerusalem had spent 70 years in captivity. Um, so let's read what it says. And it came to pass in the fourth year of King Darius, 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 that the word of the Lord came into Zechariah in the fourth day of the ninth month, even in Chislu, when they had sent unto the house of God, Sherezer and Regimelech, and their men to pray before the Lord, and to speak unto the priests which were in the house of the Lord of hosts, and to the prophet, saying, Should I weep in the fifth month, separating myself as I have done so many years? Then the word of the Lord of hosts, uh, then came the word of the Lord of hosts unto me, saying, Speak unto all the people of the land and to the priests, saying, When ye fasted and mourned, in the fifth and seventh month, even those seventy years, did ye at all fast unto me, even to me? And when ye did eat, and when ye did drink, did not ye eat for yourselves and drink for yourselves? Should ye not hear the words which the Lord hath cried by the former prophets? When Jerusalem was inhabited and in prosperity, and the cities thereof round about her, when men inhabited the south, and the plain. And the word of the Lord came unto Zechariah, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Execute true judgment, and show mercy and compassions every man to his brother, and oppress not the widow, nor the fatherless, the stranger, nor the poor, and let none of, the, of you imagine evil against his brother in your heart. But they refused to hearken. Oh, no, they, they refused to listen. But they refused to hearken and pulled away the shoulder and stopped their ears that they should not hear. Yea, they made their hearts as an adamant stone, lest they should hear the law and the words which the Lord of hosts hath sent in his spirit by the former prophets. Therefore came a great wrath from the Lord of hosts. And people, that's where Europe and America is today. A great wrath from the Lord of hosts. And you got these preachers that are telling everybody, oh, well, we're not going to be here. Uh, God's going to rapture us out of here before he does, you know, judgment. Really? Verse 13. 
Therefore it is come to pass that as he crieth, and they would not hear, so they cried, and I would not hear, saith the Lord of hosts. Therefore it is come to pass that as he cried, and they would not hear, so they cried, and I would not hear, saith the Lord of hosts. If you don't know what this is talking about, you should read the book of Ju uh, uh, Judges. When the Lord cried out through his prophets, they wouldn't listen. When the Lord sent judgment, the people cried. The Lord wouldn't listen. Oh yeah? You don't, you don't want my laws? You don't want me for a king? You don't want me for a king and my laws? No problem. You could have the Antichrist, the man of sin, the son of perdition, the beast. You could have the devil as your Savior, your Messiah, your God. Don't come crying to me. You want to live for, with the, for the devil? When you get in trouble, ask him. Verse 14. But I scattered them with a whirlwind among all the nations whom they knew not. Thus the land was desolate after them, that no man passed through nor, nor returned, for they laid the pleasant land desolate. In 1 Peter chapter 4, we read the following. I guess we'll do 15, verse 15. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 15. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. Oh no, that can't be right. Oh, God would never let us suffer for, for his sake. No. Just call up Benny Hinn and, and anybody on TBN. They'll tell you, oh, well, you know, th that's in the King James Bible. That's wrong. You know, that, that's, you know, get an NIV Bible, you know. Verse 17, for the time has come that judgment, judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Uh, and that's not a very good answer. Where shall the ungodly and sinner appear? Uh, the white throne judgment and the lake of fire, I guess. That's, I, that sounds to me like the answer. Let's take a look at Hebrews chapter 11. This is a very excellent chapter that's called the faith chapter in the Bible. We're not going to read the whole thing, but uh, I'm just going to go in verse 32. Uh, and what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Gideon and of Barak, and of Samson, and of Jephthah, Jeff, Tay, of David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in flight, Turn to flight the armies of the aliens. If only we had that today. Turn to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead, raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. So there is a resurrection, and then there's a better resurrection. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned. Remember, Paul stoned, helped stone Stephen. They were sawn asunder. 
According to legend, Isaiah, the prophet, they put him inside a hollow log and cut him in two with a saw. Uh, I don't imagine that would have been very much fun. Uh, you know, let me tell you what. If you were called to be a prophet, you are generally had a very short lifespan. Uh, unless, of course, you had a very, very godly king like Josiah or David. Yeah, David wasn't perfect. He did some bad things, but the Lord loved him. Uh, I, I kind of... I'm kind of leaning towards Josiah being my favorite king because America needed a King Josiah and we got a Donald. Oh boy. They were stoned. They were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins being destitute. You know what destitute means? It means you have nothing. Being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. Why? Because they, they took everything away from them. All they had was Christ. Well, before Christ came. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God, having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. People, if you're a believer, you're going to suffer in this world. And, uh, Boy, uh, you know, if you're not getting spanked for bad things, you don't belong to the Lord. Uh, all I am is a teacher. That's all I can do. I'm not a pastor. I'm not a prophet. I'm just a teacher. And like I say, I never wanted this job. Lord had to drag me doing it kicking and screaming and just convicted me one day, and it's like, you know what? There's so few people teaching the truth that I had to do what I could do. You know, so all I can do is warn you people. I, I can see what's coming. It's It makes me sad, but I hate to admit it, but the nations of Western Europe, the UK, America, Canada, New Zealand, Australia, we deserve what's coming. We've turned our back on the Lord and he's turned his back on us. I believe, my opinion is, the nation, these nations are beyond saving. All we can do is repent fast, get close to the Lord, and Beg his forgiveness and individual salvation. That's it. You know, there was a time when there was a church on every corner in America, and they preached the truth in righteousness. And today, I can't even name one major denomination that's even close to the truth. And I'm not saying I'm the only one with you know, any truth. And I'm sure that I'm wrong on some things, but I'm not teaching out of, um, you know, trying to get gain or deceit. And, you know, so what can I tell you? There's a, there's a, there's a remnant out there of decent teachers, but um, they're few and far between. And like I say, I'm not doing this for money. I'm not doing this for fame. If I was doing this for fame, I'd be teaching the things Benny Hinn and Joel Olstein teach. Maybe they'd make me rich too of this earth. But I don't want the things of this earth. You know, 
one day the Lord's going to look at uh, when he when he holds these ministers accountable for the garbage they're teaching. He's going to say, why did you people tolerate these Satanists that were kidnapping these children that owned the abortion clinics and murdered these children? Why did you tolerate this stuff? And they're just going to look down and twiddle their thumbs, shrug their shoulders. What can they tell him? Nothing. Nothing. They can't say anything. And the church members that, you know, they didn't even bother to pick up their Bibles. People died to give us, to give us the scriptures in our own language. They were persecuted by the Vatican, the Pope of Rome, Big Papa, murdered people using their own Bible papers to start a fire to burn them at the stake for daring to give people the Bible in their own language so that they could learn that the superstitions and the traditions of men of the papacy were wrong. And people will not even bother to pick it up. And people have been off for months under quarantine. What do they do? They get drunk, watch porn. I just, I don't get it. And I'm not some super spiritual saint. No way. Uh-uh. I'm not where I should be. I don't think any of us are, but... Uh, what can I tell you? All right, well, that's what the Lord... That's what the Bible scriptures say about fasting. Oh, one more thing. Somebody wanted... Uh, somebody had a prayer... You know who you are. The prayers for my fast are this. Cleanse my heart, O, o God, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. That the blinders will be removed from true Israel. That we would all be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding that God's people would not be deceived and come to repentance, the salvation of our family members, and particularly that Teresa's mom and my son will be set free from the tormentors, demons. Um, and there's a little bit more, but it's kind of a personal nature. So, hi, people. All blessings, praise, honor, and glory to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.